Hey, everybody, I'm breaking out the Genius Act to help everybody be able to understand it. So here it is in different parts, giving you the different takeaways of what you need to know about the Genius Act. Enjoy. Number one, the bill prohibits the issuance of payment stable coins in the United States by any person that is not a permitted payment stable coin issuer. So number one, it doesn't allow somebody who's not permitted to be issuing stablecoin. That's key. That's important. Under Section 5 of the Act, it says only permitted payment stablecoin issuers are legally authorized to issue payment stablecoins. Specifically, it says you got to be one of the following. A subsidiary of an insured depository institution, which I would say that's a bank or credit union, approved to issue stablecoins. So that means you basically are going to be regulated by an appropriate federal banking agency. And number two under that, it says a federal qualified non-bank payment stablecoin issuer, which would be a non-FDIC insured institution that is regulated by the Office of the Comptroller Currency or the OCC. And that's actually our larger national banks that get are under the control of the OCC. Or it would be a state qualified payment stablecoin issuer operating under federal standards or state standards that are a subsidiary similar to the federal standards. So that's going to be something like a state chartered entity regulated by a state banking agency. So we really like seeing number one here that we're saying, all right, the people, the organizations that can issue stable coins they're going to be more like financial institutions, which I love because financial institutions are used to dealing with money. They're used to the regulatory process. They're used to the compliance issues. We want to have, you know, the CIP programs. We want to have OFAC. We want to have all that in place. It also states in there, stablecoin issuers with greater than 10 billion, that's billion with a B, in market capitalization would be subject to federal regulation by the appropriate federal banking agency, while stablecoin issuers with 10 billion or less in market capitalization would have the option of state regulation by the relevant state banking agency as long as the agency satisfies certain federal standards. Now, it's not uncommon to see those kinds of differentiations as far as different agencies would be overseeing them based on different you know, asset size or differentiations in the amount that they're dealing with. That's quite common in the banking industry. There's a lot more to come. There's no doubt about it. If you've got any comments, shoot them over to me. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to keep this going. I've been saying a lot here re recently. This year, it's not been class dismissed. It's been, uh, let's keep the class going. We've got a lot to learn because class is in session. I'll talk to you more here soon.